Today, I get a chance to sit down with famous cartoonist Dan Perraro, creator of the award-winning syndicated cartoon panel, Bizarro. Alright, so I'm here with Dan Perraro, famed cartoonist, nationally syndicated. You've seen his stuff all over the place in newspapers and... <coughs> and... Uh, you, could, you, could, you could get arm cancer. I, from that smoke, I'm, I think of the the anatomy of the puppet. I guess it'd be kind of a no, I, I, sort of a like a forearm cancer, where it'd be where your lungs should be. Uh oh, oh no! Now you're giving me new things to worry about. I was already kind of thinking about. I, I knew there was something wrong going on. Anyway, the green thing seemed like it was. Really? People keep saying, oh, "Not normal, not normal." I'm like, "Okay, okay. I'm just going to do interviews. Just be, yeah. you know." Well, on the upside, you'll never get rectal cancer. Right. No, it ends right there, basically. So no problems in that department. Is life and death an inspiration for your cartoons? Ever? Oh yeah, all the time. It's I a do big a lot. theme. Yeah, I'm at, you know, I do a lot of cartoons about religion and about heaven and hell, that kind of stuff. And then sometimes people write to me and go, "Why are you spreading your Christian mythology through?" I'm like, "I'm not. I'm I'm atheist. It's just that these things address. This is the reason that religion is so prevalent in society is because it addresses." the psychological issues of being mortal and understanding your own mortality. It seems like it's so. impossible to dodge. You can't really dodge that question. Unless. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, once you have, once you reach our sort of level of self-awareness, and by our, I don't mean you and me, I mean humans in general, and, and oh. you as a uh, sort of an offshoot of humanity right. in a literal sense. Right. Um, yeah, you, you, once you can comprehend your own life and death, it becomes a big issue. So, yeah, I, I think about these things all the time. It doesn't scare me. I used to be afraid of death in the sense that it made me anxious like it does most people. But then I read a quote by Mark Twain that just set me free. Ah, uh, the old Mark Twain stuff. Mark Twain. Somebody asked him, aren't you afraid? Because he, he sort of teetered with or he kind of um, intimated that uh, that he didn't believe in religion or was atheist or whatever. And so people would ask him sometimes. He never came around and said, I'm atheist, but this was... It's implied, right? It's sort of like, kind of eh, you can kind of in his life, I guess. But So people ask him, aren't you afraid of what will happen after you die? And he said so brilliantly... I was dead for billions of years before I was born, and it didn't inconvenience me in the least. That oh, was wow. the last time I gave a second thought to death. That's kind of profound, actually. It, it is incredibly profound. Right. And now I don't care the least bit about it. When it happens, it happens. It's... Yeah, because you don't remember pre-life. You don't remember... Well, it's like, you don't, you know, you don't remember what happens when you're sound asleep, either. And, I mean, if you're, if you're just gone unconscious... I usually don't sleep, cares. so it's sort of a problem. It's sort of yeah. inconvenient, but uh, we'll get into that later. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just trying... Yeah, it's, I forgot who I was talking to. Right. Now, if you don't sleep, it really makes you go nutty. It's always, art was always my favorite thing to do. And, right. Uh, I was always looking for it. As a kid, I always thought, well, someday I'll be a, an artist. And, you know, I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know if I was going to be a painter or, a, uh, you know, anything from a, from Picasso to a billboard painter. I didn't know, but I just wanted to use art as a living, you know. And, and so I started uh, uh, I started doing some fine art, and that was pretty, that was even less lucrative. And then I got into commercial fine art. Fine art as in, like, like, yeah, like realism paintings, type you know, like, okay. Well, in fact, these paintings up here on the wall, these are, these are the kind of crazy things I paint. Oh, that's wild. And uh, this one behind us also here is another one. But um, and they're fun. I still do that kind of thing. And uh, you know, and people like them. They I can sell them and show them and things. But it's just not the you know gigantic. It's like not the money generating. Or at least early on, it was not the money generating career I needed quickly. Um, so I got into commercial art, which was advertising. And I was literally okay. drawing Pepsi and. Fritos and uh, you know uh, tortillas, like that Chester chips Cheetah guy and things I like was that. Literally, yeah, and it wasn't even cartoons. It was like realistic drawings. I used to do like these realistic drawings of food for the grocery store section of the newspaper. Oh, Those were the kinds of jobs <laughs> I had, and there was money in that, but that was insanely boring. Uh, Probably more mundane. You can't really be creative, it's right? Very mundane. It's not a creative job. You just got some executive hovering over you. Yeah. Is the cartoon done yet? The, yeah, it was a lot of that, right. and um, so, but the, you know, it's it was a decent living. It was better than you know, it was better better than working in a cubicle somewhere, it, at least to my mind. And then I got into cartooning, and I, I, it took me a long time before I could quit all the illustration stuff. But the cartooning eventually started to pay off after about ten years or so. I started making a decent living, and now I make a nice living. I'm not I'm not rich to my great chagrin. Uh, what but, is a uh, chagrin? It's uh, it's it's great. I'll tell you that. Uh, 
Chagrin. I haven't heard that word. Chagrin, yes. Uh, chagrin is uh, disappointment, I mm. guess. In oh, okay, case. okay. Yes. So that's a vocab word for people who are, were wanting to learn vocab. Yes, chagrin. Well. S-H-U-G-R-Y-N. There you go. Well, I'll plaster it up on the screen that's so you right. can see Look that. that up and uh, you'll... It's, uh, and how do you come up with all these cartoons all day? Because you have so many wacky... I love your stuff. It's all wacky and it's all daily, basically. So, I mean, how in the world... What is going on in the mind of, of you to come up with all these ideas? Well, part of it is the massive amount of ganja that I smoke every Okay, day. so tip ganja equals creativity. Yeah, I'm basically a chain spliff smoker. I think it's humongous. Yes, and... Um, it's particularly good in 3D. Oh, whoa. Is this a 3D camera? Um, yes. All right, well, anyway. <laughs> that remains to be seen.